Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are talking about Tropical Storm Isaias for probably one of the last times here. We're going to go over our updated forecast for this one, current conditions, uh, the wind, and the rain we are expecting. So all of the impacts we will be feeling up and down the East Coast from Tropical Storm Isaias. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do the weather-related content. And also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our exciting Patreon page in our description and pinned comment. Uh, we've been posting model updates pretty much daily daily for this storm so if you'd like to get in on some content like that uh, and obviously for future storms uh, in the near future uh, you can go ahead and join there. I'd also ask that you join our very exciting discord server and Facebook groups down below. Now for today's comment of the day I want to know if you had to make a guess what do you think the maximum amount of rainfall we're going to see anywhere from this tropical storm is. I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say. Uh, I think maybe 10 inches is a safe bet. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at our current satellite imagery. And as you can see, it is kind of struggling uh, still, as we saw yesterday. In recent hours, it has kind of blown up a little bit and looked a bit better, uh, but still not necessarily a hurricane anymore, obviously. It is definitely a tropical storm on the upper side of the spectrum of a tropical storm, but really, uh, that's not saying a lot. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the low pressure location, and take a look at the National Hurricane Center's 8 a.m. update for this one. All right, so here's our low pressure location, and as you can see, it's just offshore of southern Florida. We are going to see, uh, I would say, moderate to major impacts, depending on where you are, up and down the Florida coast here throughout the day today and the night tonight. So be on the lookout for that. Stay tuned for the rest of this video because we're going to talk about the winds and also the amount of rainfall you guys could expect. So uh, I would recommend you stay tuned for that. If not, be sure to just stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center. They have plenty of updates for things like that that you could always, always take a look at, and I highly recommend that, actually. All right, now here is our National Hurricane Center cone forecast for Tropical Storm Isaias. I can't wait to not have to say that name anymore. I got to tell you guys, I know I've been really just struggling to say it, uh, and I can't wait until we have a storm with an easier name to say. Uh, maybe soon, I don't know. But either way, I think the name will at least be easier to say on our next system. Uh, and here we go. We have tropical storm warnings from southern Florida all the way to the coast of South Carolina. Uh, in North Carolina, we have a tropical storm watch there for southern North Carolina. That's going to need to be upgraded to a tropical storm warning, obviously. Uh, now, we are expecting this one to pretty much remain over Florida's coast until about 2 p.m. tomorrow where it will enter the nearby the Georgia coast. And then by the time we're at 2 a.m. on Tuesday, it'll be pretty much making impact with the around South Carolina, probably more on the South Carolina side, uh, but, you know, in between North Carolina and South Carolina. And then it's very quickly going to move up the coast, bringing mostly, I would say, flooding rains, but also some damaging winds until it reaches New England, northern New England, and then it's going to become a post-tropical system after that point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the last update of our uh, spaghetti models here, our intensity guidance. We're going to take a look at a new tropical system that's upcoming, and then we're going to start talking about impacts here. All right, so here is our spaghetti model guidance, the most recent one. Uh, and as you can see, there isn't much, I, I would say there isn't much difference here than recent days. They've really pinned down the forecast here. Uh, we're expecting this one to really come close or on shore of Florida there. Uh, near the East Coast beaches of Florida. Beautiful area, by the way. Uh, and we're going to see this one head directly north from that point and probably make impact in South Carolina, like I said, uh, but possibly North Carolina. And then it's going to go through uh, inland in North Carolina, inland in Virginia, through the Delmarva, New Jersey, and New England. Uh, if it's more near the coast, expect more major impacts. If it's more inland, expect flooding to be pretty much the only major impact uh, as wind will have a much tougher time uh, being too strong. It might still create some minor damage, but really uh, we're going to see that closer to the coast if the storm is closer to the coast, that is. Here is our model intensity guidance for this one. And as you can see, there is a couple of models that say, hey, this one might actually intensify a little bit and become maybe a category one again. Uh, but the majority here are saying otherwise. They're saying no. This one is going to remain a strong tropical storm for the next 48 hours or so. And then there will be a strong drop off after it starts to interact with land even more further up, probably in South Carolina, if not North Carolina, like I said before. And then it's going to drop dramatically 
in its intensity, uh, and the impacts will also drop in intensity following suit. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at that second tropical disturbance we have. Then we're going to start talking about how much winds you could expect up and down the East Coast, how much rainfall you could expect. We're going to give you guys our updated cone forecast here from Direct Weather, and then we're going to finish up the video. So here is that next disturbance. Quickly, I wanted to mention this because this is going to be probably the topic of future videos coming up. I'm going to be making my August forecast very soon. I know I'm late for it. I apologize for that. I'm sure you guys understand that there's been a lot to talk about that's more important than a monthly update. Uh, so I will be bringing the August forecast very soon. Be on the lookout for that during the next week. I know it's going to be late, but whatever. It's going to be here, rest assured. We're also going to be updating the fall forecast and bringing all sorts of new content like that. So be on the lookout for that. But we do have a 60% chance of another tropical disturbance heading towards the East Coast. The chances of it impacting the East Coast is uh, quite low at this point. I think it's probably going to curve uh, far out to sea, but we will have to see because this is only the five-day outlook. So it's really the extended forecast where we would see what would happen with this one. So pretty much all options are on the table. It's going to be something we're going to need to track. We have a 60% chance of development within the next five days, 20% within the next 48 hours. So I doubt we see anything soon, but within the next five days, we're going to need to watch it very, very closely. Now let's start talking about those winds. Uh, and here is by time we're at about 2 a.m. on Monday the 3rd. And as you can see, it is going to be pretty much onshore of Florida here, the central east Florida coast. We're going to have a 994 millibar low pressure system. And those reds are anywhere from about 30 to 45 knot winds there. The yellows is where we're seeing about 50 knots plus, which is pretty strong enough to cause damaging uh, winds to areas here on shore of Florida. Uh, so be on the lookout for damaging winds along the Florida coast. This is when the storm is going to be at its strongest as far as a land impact. Let's take it to about 2 a.m. on the 4th, which is going to be Tuesday. And this is when it's going to come on shore of South Carolina, like I said before, where we're going to see those 30 to 45 knot winds come on shore of South Carolina and also North Carolina there. Uh, but again, that's not going to be those yellows that we saw for Florida. So we're going to see a little less impact as far as winds, I think, for these more northern states where we see impacts. Uh, but still, nevertheless, it will be moderate to major impacts here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're just going to extend this even further up the mid-Atlantic coast. And then we're going to start talking about our total rainfall as well from this one. So again, like I said before, this one is going to start moving more quickly, actually, as time goes on. Uh, so here we are by time we're at about Tuesday in the afternoon hours and it's already up in the Virginia uh, where we're seeing those reds kind of uh, in the Chesapeake Bay. So we could see some 35 to 45 knot winds just on shore, but really those pinks seem to be the more widespread uh, types of winds we're seeing, which is going to be anywhere from about 20 to 30 uh, knots for a lot of these areas, which is enough to cause some minor to moderate damage. I do not expect, expect uh, any sort of widespread uh, major wind damage or anything from this one. Though as time moves on and we see it head over the Delmarva and in through southern New Jersey, we do see those reds and yellows want to reappear here. Uh, and this is by a time we're at about 8 p.m. on Tuesday. So again, just moving very quickly. Uh, so for South Jersey and also for uh, the Delmarva, be on the lookout because that's, again, 30 to 45 to even, if the yellows come on shore, 50 knot winds, which is going to be enough to cause some moderate to major damage there uh, in some spotty areas. I'm not saying widespread, but it is enough to bring some trees down, things of that nature. Let's go ahead and move it towards about 2 a.m. on Wednesday the 5th, and you can see it's mostly up here for New, uh, New England by this point. We're seeing Long Island, Connecticut see the most impacts by the time we're at the night hours from Tuesday heading into Wednesday. Uh, and then by the time we're at about 2 p.m. on Wednesday, you can see that it is going to bring some of those pinks on shore to Maine. It's going to feel like a, a lot like a nor'easter for you guys, so nothing you're not used to, uh, but expect minor to moderate damage to be possible up here for New England. Now, as far as total rainfall, uh, here we go. Anywhere in the grays, greens, or blues, you're under an inch of rain, uh, which we're not seeing a lot of that for the eastern seaboard. Actually, we're seeing much more of the pinks here, which is going to be an inch to two inches. We're seeing a lot of reds, which is two to four inches of rain. So very widespread amounts of two to four inches of rain, which is bordering on enough to cause some minor flooding. But it's those golds that are going to be scattered throughout pretty much all up and down the East Coast, as you can see. That's where we're seeing four to 15 inches of rain. Uh, a lot of areas are in that six, eight, ten inch amounts. So I definitely, like I said, I think some areas will surpass 10 inches of rain. 
Uh, this is when we start to see potential big flooding impacts, especially when it's up and down the East Coast. There's areas that vary from being non-susceptible to flooding to very susceptible to flooding. I'm sure many areas that are in both of those categories are going to receive a lot of rain here. So we are going to see varying impacts here, but I think many, many areas will see major uh, impacts, especially from flooding and also some from wind as well. Now let's get into our cone forecast for Tropical Storm Isaias. Hopefully that's one of the last times I have to say that. Uh, and here's for the next five days. It's going to be heading up the Florida coast where it could come on shore at times, could be offshore. And then I think it's going to make impact with somewhere in South Carolina. Uh, it's going to move onshore through North Carolina, through Virginia, up into the Delmarva most likely, and New Jersey. I've made the cone very wide, but you can expect it to most likely be around the middle. Uh, it's very unlikely that it's on either of the extreme ends of that cone, but I want to keep all of the actual percent probabilities on hand here just in case something unexpected happens. Uh, but I do expect it to come on shore of South Carolina, move through eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, over the Delmarva, over New Jersey, maybe eastern Pennsylvania, and then through into New England, uh, where it's going to eventually move into Canada probably and, again, become a post-tropical system uh, very shortly after that, possibly bringing some heavy rainfall, but winds will be quite minimal at that point. We have winds of 63 miles per hour right now with this one. Uh, we have a 996 millibar low pressure system and it's moving northwest at nine miles per hour, but it's going to speed up once it reaches the mid-Atlantic like I said before. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, we made our second winter forecast yesterday. You can check that out. I asked you guys, what kind of winter are you hoping for? And Susan here said, hoping for a good snow in the Fredericksburg, Virginia area. I take it you did not have a good snow last year. I'm sure you will have one this year, hopefully. And now for our patron highlight of the day, uh, here it is. We have plenty of people here. I thank you all so much for being patrons and supporting the channel. If you'd like to become a patron, you can check it out again in the description or the pinned comment down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe.